get into it. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for coming, guys. Like exciting times. Uh, here we are, start of November. Things going super well. Such a crazy, exciting launch. Like, I mean, it's quite incredible that we got to over a billion market cap in like four days or something like this. And yeah, the amount of excitement and interest was, yeah, super incredible. So super happy. Super happy about that. So, so yeah, um, just want to like give an update on the latest status of what's going on. Um, and then we can get into some questions. So yeah, generally speaking, like we've already been super successful, like carbon markets are up. The price of carbon has gone from a floor of around $3 or under $3 to, I mean, some people are saying 450, other people are saying over five, but I think it's definitely safe to say that it's over four for sure. And I mean, that's a 25% jump in three weeks. We've been talking to Vera, the standard body who certifies these credits, the voluntary market that we're using to start with. And they're just blown away. Like they're, <laughs> they're scrambling, trying to understand what's happening. Like they're really excited also. And they're being really cooperative working with us to ensure that we build this uh, future together. So um, yeah, no, no news on that front, but we're, we're definitely uh, working very closely with them on that. So yeah, I mean, that's, that's the general news. I mean, generally speaking, I think the vibe that's been picked up on in the last week has been like some fears around how the price has gone up and come down again. I think, you know, it's quite clear that like the way the price exploded was, uh, yeah, quite impressive. And that just shows the hype and like the excitement for something like this, like that there's a hunger really to, to take action for climate and at the same time look after ourselves, like to really, to reward people to do the right thing is um, really quite an incredible possibility, I would say. So. Yeah, we exploded out of the gates, you know, like there's like a lot of people who probably found out about Klima later and like entered later as the price went up and things like this. And I think like this is just standard for any kind of offering, like or any kind of, it wasn't an offering, but any kind of launch, right? I mean, if you look at any launch of any project, even Olympus, and you can check this on the chart yourself, um, it's quite normal for there to be uh, a big explosion if it's a high quality product or a project like ours. Um, and of course you need to, you need some health inside of that price also. So it's actually really important that it, that it comes back a little, right? Um, I mean, it came back quite a lot. Like, I don't know exactly how much I think it's probably 50% or close to that, um, which has been quite shocking for a lot of people. Um, I would say like generally speaking, like it's been exacerbated just by the fact that our cap grew like so big, our supply grew so big and so fast and the price went up so high and we didn't like, you know, I mean, Kujo can talk more about it like from policy's perspective, but like we obviously made plans ahead of this based on certain assumptions, like our best guess is not being able to know what will happen. and. Um, Obviously, we need to optimize for certain things at certain times, and it takes time to build liquidity, right? Like, our liquidity is growing incredibly fast. Like, I don't know for sure, but I suspect like it's probably as fast, if not faster, than Olympus. Like, I can't say that's a fact, but I have a feeling just based on um, on my own, yeah, my own outlook at least. But like, it's certainly fair to say that like uh, our liquidity has been growing incredibly quickly, and. We have some more numbers and more information on this coming up later, basically. So I think like as liquidity grows, like if big orders come in, like it can sometimes like break through cell walls and like create this kind of like big jumps that seems to have scared some people. But I think the reality of this is that like the game here is tree tree, right? Like as three three with Olympus, I mean it's about like Time in Klimadao is better than timing Klimadao, right? But of course, there's going to be people that are trying to do this. Of course, there's going to be people that are over leveraged and that are feeling the pressure when price goes down. And I think it's probably fair to say that 
people who have been, you know, in this game longer with more experience are probably more accustomed to that because it's incredibly triggering, like emotionally, uh, to see um, massive, like vested interest falling quickly, right? So I think it's quite, it's probably fair to say that, um, yeah, like well, I personally am glad that we've had we've had some kind of pullback and that it's now showing strength again. And there's absolutely nothing wrong. Like everything is going according to plan, and everything is going really well actually. So, um, I mean, that's like the general message like I want to share with you guys. Like really, <laughs> things are going better than expected. That's for sure. Not not worse. There's no problems basically. So I just want to address like one uh, clear issue. And that's around this idea that uh, investors are selling. Um, you know, like, yes, we do have investors. And this uh, comes in the form of P-Klima, which is an option to redeem Klima at a price. And yes, uh, these P-Klimas are unlocked as supply grows. And uh, the investors, advisors, and the team have these. But I assure you, like, the team is super tree tree. And the majority, like the huge majority of advisors and investors have not sold at all. Like um, I'm, I'm confident in saying that and like we're gathering data to, to show this essentially. But suffice to say like, um, I know it's fun to FUD in the price channel when you wanna buy lower basically. Um, but yeah, just be aware that there's a lot of people that are not, that are quite new to being DGENs and can easily <laughs> not really understand what's happening. Um, and there's like a lot of rumors and ideas going around, right? Like, but in reality, like all of this is normal and all of this is according to plan. And like, you know, there's no dumping happening here, right? Like we went to great lengths to do a fair launch and give everybody an equal opportunity to do this, uh, you know, to get access to tokens and all of this stuff. Like no one bought before the community, right? Like that's, that's a fact. So, um, yeah, I mean, I just want to address this directly about that, right? Like, I mean, for every whale who sells, yes, there is people who are holding a lot. Like, for each whale who's selling, like, we have data to show that, like, smaller holders are buying up those sales, right? So, all of this, like, equals more resilient, more powerful, more strong team down in the longer term, right? And this is a long-term game. Like, I mean, we're only, what, two weeks in or something? Like, this is nothing. Like, this is really just the beginning. So... Yeah, I just want to put that out there, like, you know, stake your stuff, like, we have figures coming in this call that will show, like, what percentage of people are staking, all this stuff, like, and, like, it's a very small minority of people that are not staked and, like, that are selling, right? And, like, this is just the beginning, so just wanted to, to put that out there. Guys, does one of you want to talk about uh, liquidity and take, take, it, take it from here, basically? I'm happy to keep going, of course. Yeah, yeah no, I, I can. This I can is where we have. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I, I, I'm just a quick note about liquidity. Um, kind of like I remember we touched on before. Um, you know, leading up to launch and everything. You know, with the the funds that we got from the LVP. You know, we really went through and and had some discussion and and talked to some advisors as far as what good, you know, what what a healthy. <clears throat> Uh, like liquidity to market cap ratio would be for launch, and, and we ended up, you know, targeting about thirteen percent uh, for launch with the eighty million dollar market cap, which, as we all know, has been blown out of the water here. Um. So with that, um, with that happening, and, and part of the other challenge here was also having to launch liquidity for BCT, um, as well as Klima. So half of you know those lbp funds got split across both of those pools um and and 13 percent for for claimants where we ended up so just as as part of that and, and just looking at this explosive growth that we've seen in the last couple of weeks and to to help you know increase the stability of clean um you know 95 percent of you know when we release bonds like the vast majority of those bonds are being sold to generate and hold more liquidity that Klima can own um, just to to shore everything up and, and to give us a, an even more solid foundation uh, moving forward as we as we start sucking in more carbon 
into the treasury. Well, sounds good. Thanks. Thanks for that. So I just want to touch on BCT also. Um, I mean, it's quite incredible, like what's happening already, like what we've done, like what we've enabled and what's, you know, what's really happening right now. Like already on chain, we have like the most, the most liquid, like high volume carbon market in the world. Uh, there is an existing market out there called CBL. I think their annual, uh, their annual volume is something around 70 million um, tons. And like, we are already like, I have some numbers here. These are from, um, these are from last week. So these are absolutely not up to date, right? But you know, something like $19 million of liquidity, $55 million of volume every day, every day, right? So um, I just want to point out that like, you know, BCT as an underlying asset, like is doing incredibly well already. There's already like a lot of interest from other DeFi protocols um, for carbon as a collateral asset. And it's really looking like um, we've really paved the way to uh, a new use case for carbon and a very powerful use case for carbon, right? So like the resilience of BCT itself uh, is just continuing to grow all the time, right? There's gonna be a lot of news in the coming weeks around like uses of, of BCT or on-chain carbon uh, in its various forms. And all of this like is good for Klimadao essentially. So um, we've seen quite clearly already that the price of BCT is respecting uh, the price of chain with a premium, of course. And that's like super exciting, right? Because the reality is that BCT is trading at a, a premium on chain, which means that everybody off chain, including the big carbon brokers and all of these guys are incentivized to bring their carbon on chain because on chain carbon is like the most profitable it's the most profitable market for carbon right and so this is happening already now we see this and if this continues i mean it wouldn't take very long before i don't want to say all of the carbon is on chain but a vast majority of that carbon is on chain right and it's not a big logical step and jump to you know to getting to carbon finding its home on chain essentially which is really one of our you know it has always been one of our earliest goals, right? Because of the transparency that it brings um, on chain, that um, the sources of all these carbon tons, like the sales, who's offsetting, all this stuff, like anyone can see this on chain, right? On a block explorer itself. So, I mean, blockchain itself, like really lends itself to being an ideal home for carbon. And we're really making this happen right now. So I just want to share this news with you. It's really exciting. Like there's a lot happening. Um, outside of Klimadao, even just around carbon, and all of this is is good for us essentially. So, yeah, just wanted to bring that good news also. Yeah, I think that's that's pretty. I mean, guys, like, who's going to talk about yeah, the next point there? Um, I can talk a little bit about the DAO structure. Uh, that we're setting up. So um, we have a separate DAO contributor server now. Um, we're keeping the um, the constituency in there somewhat small right now. Um, I know a lot of people have volunteered to contribute, but we really need to get in place a more formal structure so that we can direct uh, and coordinate all of the amazing community contributors that have volunteered to uh, to work for the DAO. Um, so right now we're working with some experts from the Olympus DAO um, team who are on their operations team to set up the DAO in a way that um, sort of learns from the lessons of Olympus and also um, is more oriented around our um, sort of climate mission. So um, in particular, our partnerships team um, has already started to be really active um, following up and getting a list of uh, potential partnerships put together. Um, and, and our creative team is going to be working with the core team to put together a uh, brand strategy for the overall Klima brand moving forward. Um, otherwise, we are uh, we're hard at work on the operations team trying to get uh, an onboarding process in place so that we can uh, effectively bring all of the contributors who volunteered in the hashtag contribute channel into the DAO server and get them uh, get them working.
Yeah, and just to add on to that, we're already seeing some uh, of the different teams inside of the DAO starting to have meetings. Like this week, we're going to be having a creative brief among both core and the contributor teams to be able to get everybody aligned on Klima's branding and identity and tone. Yeah, it's it's super exciting to see the energy we have. Like self-organization is happening and groups are forming and we have some super smart people in there. It's super exciting. Um, I just wanted to also just shout out basically that COP26 is on this week uh, for the next two weeks actually in Glasgow, Scotland, which is where all of the government sort of like UN people meet to make plans and commitments to each other for, you know, basically not flushing us down the toilet. Um, so all the people we're not asking permission for are there. We do have boots on the ground. Uh, we have actions planned. And if you're in the neighborhood or you know someone who is, please reach out and get connected and get involved. I think this is a good opportunity for us to really um, spread the word of Klimadao. At the end of the day, like, our goals are bigger than being DJs in the blockchain, right? Like, we are bridging the real world, really. And although we've had fabulous success already, once we start really connecting with people off-chain, and we're already doing it, right? Like, we are literally interoperating with the real world, like, through these carbon credits and through working with these existing operators in the carbon markets as they are. So, I mean, we're, we're showing that we can do it and that we have done it and we're doing it. And there's not a lot of crypto projects doing that, right? So at the end of the day, like, we really begin to get into our end game of success. Like once we, we reach out and like cross those boundaries and really get that energy involved also, right? Like these people who are active in, um, you know, working with uh, leaders, uh, you know, that are active in educating, that are active in shouting if necessary, um, yeah, we need to connect with all of those people. So, yeah, I mean, if you're in and around there or you want to go there and you want to be involved with that, just reach out and we can definitely connect to the right people who are, who are doing that. Um, yeah. Other than that, we have some pretty cool numbers to share. Uh, anyone want to take that? I'm going to do it. All right. If you don't, okay, so cool. I'm trying to get back to those numbers. Yeah, good job. Go for it, man. Um, yeah, I mean, it's some of the, I think we kind of put all these together, but just kind of a, a highlight of, of the numbers are um, one of the really cool things is that in Vera right now, there's over 10 billion credits that have been retired for Toucan. Um, and like this amounts to Two point, like basically two point five percent of the total uh, Vera carbon supply that's available right now uh, in two weeks. So that's that's like number one, one of the most amazing things uh, in my mind. In two weeks, <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. That's like what one in forty. Mm. Yeah, Love it. um, but as far as you know, our, our LP fees. Um, Continue to kind of to tick along. We brought in over three and a half million dollars. Uh, that's um, in the actual fees, and those LP fees actually just get driven back into liquidity, and that's kind of where you know that that helps grow it and keep that stable. Um, Risk free value. You said four point six million, right? You broke up for me there. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. Um, uh, Risk free value. That's, you know, with the bonds, we're continuing to grow that. That's up to 1.75 billion um, BCT in our treasury. And what that really means is that right now, you know, we have enough uh, carbon in the treasury that we could, you know, mint out another you know, 1.4 million Klima um, for, for sure, guaranteed. Um, and that, that's also what kind of gives us what's called our runway. Uh, which is at 102 days. So, if worst case scenario, we can still print out, you know, and, and give stakers rewards for another 100 days, which is which is awesome. Um, the fact that we're maintaining that runway with such a with such a high um, APY right now is is awesome. Um, Super cool. 
So our our backing per clima is at four around four point six. Um, so that means that each you know risk free backing is around four four point six four point seven. Uh, BCT per clima. So that's kind of the minimum uh, backing that we have right now. Um, I know, I think there's been a, a little bit of confusion. If you're looking at the dashboard and you see the, uh, the market value of treasury, and I've got the total carbon tons in the treasury, that's there. We've got 8 million tons of carbon in the uh, treasury right now, which is astounding. Um, and the market value is at 75 million. Um, but that does also include some of the Klima and USDC that we've got uh, from the LP positions as well. Uh, we are so close, so close, guys, to 30,000 climates. We're at 29,892. So close. That's crazy. And, that, and that's really resilient, right? Like, I mean, the more holders we have, like, the more resilient we are. And this is just like we've seen these numbers just growing all the time. So it's like, yeah, I think this is super promising. If you compare this to launches of other projects, I mean, it's crazy. I haven't seen this before. Um, but then just a, another kind of quick note on the liquidity side of things, um, as far as supply of liquidity that exists at SushiSwap, um, you know, the Klima, the Klima BCT pools added 32.5% uh, to its, its liquidity pool in this last week, and the BCT USDC pool has added 20% in the last week. So um, that's just kind of to highlight, you know, that we're we're continuing to march forth on that um, as well. And then another amazing value here um, is that, you know, right now 95.7% of all Klima is staked. So it's, that's, that's an outstanding value right there. I, I love it. That's, yeah, that's so, what I got. I mean, this is the thing, right? Like, there's so little Klima on the market because everything is staked, basically. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. Cool. All right. I mean, yeah, is there more? Do, do you think we should go to questions now? Let's do it. Yeah, let's get some people up here. Yeah, we've got some hands. Greetings, Kali. Hello there. Come on stage. Hello. Hello. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. I, I have three questions. Uh, the first question is, uh, what is the price prediction? The second question, can you please tell us about the climate relationship with token? <clears throat> okay, and your third question? Third question is, how do you think Klima will do against competitors like carbon five, uh, carbon five, for example. Okay. Um, first question. I don't think we can make any prediction of price. Uh, I think first of all, it would get us in a very legally complicated situation, and secondly, I don't think anybody knows the price. To be honest, um, everybody. I think the price that it is right now is kind of like the sum of all knowledge and the sum of all opinions about what price should be. Um, but yeah, I'm afraid we can't really give you an answer to that question, friend. Um, I wish I knew. Um, so your second question, the relationship between Klima and Tucan is that Tucan is responsible for the carbon bridge and the protocol that allows for carbon to be a tokenized asset. So uh, carbon credits or carbon offsets have existed in the world uh, for decades, I guess, at this point. Um, and they have been on chain before, but Tucan has really, I would say, revolutionized this process of doing tokenization of carbon credits in the way, in the best way that it can be done. And uh, they manage this bridging process um, that allows people to bring the carbon on chain, like all of these million tons that you see in the treasury, in our treasury, um, are they came to the bridge, the carbon bridge. So they developed that bridge, they managed that bridge, 
And they also manage a piece of infrastructure um, around the carbon standard, or, or uh, what do they call them? Carbon reference pools, um, of which uh, BCT is the first. So a carbon reference pool creates fungibility and deep liquidity from carbon tons. So it's fair to say that like carbon tons are fungible at the vintage level, which means uh, at the year level. So for each um, project, it has many vintages. And it's much like you can imagine a bottle of wine that a 2018 vintage may be more valuable than a 2019 vintage, right? So fungibility uh, happens at the vintage level. And uh, so for this reason, like, um, you know, a project may be issued like 100,000 tons after going through a big lengthy procedure for producing those tons, right? Um, however, uh, fungibility is quite limited in that even if it's 100,000 tons or a million tons or whatever, like it's not really deep liquidity. And every single project is unique and different. It's fair to say that a, a reforestation project that uh, creates employment, that uh, you know, increases health, income, gender equality, and education in a community has got very different attributes than uh, a ton of carbon that has come from using a gas stove that avoided trees getting cut down, right? They're very different tons, um, and they have very different attributes. So the two can carbon um, reference pools uh, create the ability for uh, stripping project carbon tons of their attributes and reconstituting these carbon tons together in these pools under specific rules. So it's possible to create several different or any infinite number of types of these reference pools. Um, BCT is the first of those on the Token protocol. And uh, BCT is optimized for deep liquidity. Uh, and this is done using like the limitations of the Vera credits. They need to be Vera certified, firstly. Uh, they need to be post-2008 onwards. And this is like the bare minimum standard um, as, as, we, as we agreed together, right? Um, KlimaDAO and Tukum. And the purpose of this is to create a floor price for carbon, right? So as we are seeing already, like the quality is only improving and the price is only going up. So just to say like these are the two aspects of Tukan. They're like, Tukan is very separate to KlimaDAO and that's super important because at the end of the day, like, um, you know, there needs to be like a sort of legitimate, credible neutrality. And Toucan's wheelhouse is very much focused on like enabling these protocols and enabling best practice and like defining these rules and like really just, you know, focus more the protocol level, whereas we at Klima have different focus altogether, right? Um, but it's true that like at this time, like both launched uh, at the same time. And that's simply that like, you know, tokenized carbon as an asset, it's time has come really. And um, yeah, that's what I would say. So, I mean, Toucan, close friends, but not the same as Klima, as Klima though. And yeah, that's it. Mm. And to your third mm. question, I don't know those people. I don't know if anyone else does, but I just realized there's like 14 people and I've been blabbing on here for quite some time now, <laughs> waiting to ask questions. Yeah. Um, I can so just say something briefly mm. about like competitors and what, what it really means to be a competitor with Klima. So like, Toucan itself is a generic protocol, right? We can accept many different types of carbon offsets into a Toucan pool. So a good example would be MOSS, MCO2 is their token. Um, in theory, those MCO2 offsets could also be pooled into a Toucan pool like BCT. And so that's not really directly competing with Klima, even though they're in the same space. I'm not familiar with the Carbon5 project you mentioned, but I'm most carbon-based Crypto projects are not building a reserve currency. As far as I know, I'm not the only carbon back reserve currency project, but of course, I'm sure there are other people thinking of doing something similar. You're dead on. That's totally correct. Yeah, thank you for adding that. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Kali. Have a good day. You too. Thank you. So 12, 1, 2, 3, you've been invited. You may see a banner you have to click on.
Hi there, everyone. Uh, it's Vlada from Eastern Europe. Sorry for my bad English, but uh, I would like to ask how you would estimate the risk to invest into a project for me as a retail investor. Thank you. How would you describe how would we describe the risk of investing in Klimadao? Is it? Uh, yes, exactly. I would say that uh, cryptocurrencies themselves or any kind of like crypto project itself is extremely high risk. And um, yeah, I mean, compared to traditional investments, like it's certainly extremely high risk, any crypto project, right? Including Bitcoin, which is maybe the least risky or Ethereum even, right? Um, we, you know, we broke into and out of the, the top hundred. So we're like certainly a very small, uh, community relative to an established community over many years and um, we are certainly you know even compared to Olympus like we have a sort of more volatile underlying asset although all arrows point upwards for the value of carbon and that points for even higher value up for Klimadao um, you know theoretically it may even be more volatile than, than Olympus style but you know that's yet to be seen um, that's purely speculation on my part. I would say, like, to be frank, um, it's like, like I said, it's risky, right? I mean, like, I wouldn't bet your house on anything at all, right? Um, but, you know, of course, no one can give you, like, financial advice on that. Uh, so it's a bit of a tricky question to answer at all, to be honest. I mean, but, like, to be as to be as frank as possible, like I don't think anyone would expect you or recommend that you put like all of your money into Pimada. I think that's fair to say, right? Unless you don't care about anything more than having a positive impact on the environment, on the planet, and helping the world, and um, you're prepared to risk it all because nothing is more important to you. Yeah, exactly. It's also a... sorry. I was also going to say, there's also, of course, like with any crypto project, there's always the technical risk of like, um, which we can mitigate in terms of like doing audits and that sort of stuff, which we're taking those actions. And there's also, and we've taken, we've also had code previously audited. Um, there's also technical risk in personal liabilities and like keeping your own computer secure, your wallet's only as secure as the device it's on, that sort of stuff. So it's always good to keep track of how secure your privacy is and how secure your systems are as well. Okay, thank you. The purpose is great, and I already took that risk, so keep my finger crossed for you. Thank You're you. We're all going to make it. Don't worry. <laughs> okay, thank you. Bye. EMCG, yeah, hello. Hey, guys. Thanks for uh, for doing this. I just wanted to say, um, you know, how commendable your efforts have been so far, and and the rest of the group. You know, there's this. It's it's obviously such a meaningful project, and the the challenge is is immense on both the technical and and kind of incentive design point of view, and then also um, chewing into the real world um, aspects of it. You know, is is virtually unprecedented. So. Um, you know, a really great effort by by all of you and 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 the community. Um, I, I'm my question revolves more around the, the the latter half of that problem, and that's the the real real world implications and real world value we're creating with all of this. Um, I think I think one of you mentioned maybe it was Rainbow Warrior about um, some of the ongoing projects um, to either to to really create value with the the BCT underlying token, whether that's distributing to corporate buyers or or you know um, creating kind of a, a composable primitive for for other blockchains to and, and other projects to to leverage. Um, I, I was curious if maybe you could go into a little bit more detail on, on some of those efforts, how how you guys are thinking about um, really the intrinsic value of of the underlying treasury. Um, you know, I think it's it, for now, the just the the fact that this project exists and the community is so energized to really suck up all this this carbon makes sense. But um, to create kind of a durable, scalable treasury with intrinsic value, 
Um, how, how are you guys thinking about that? Well, I would say to start off with, in terms of increasing demand for BCTs, we've seen a lot of uh, interest expressed by the community to utilize BCTs in like NFTs or games on the blockchain, those finding new ways to find intrinsic value for uh, an asset which pe people might have previously been unfamiliar with. So I think there's a lot of promise in that. And in terms of supporting those teams, uh, we're definitely exploring ways maybe we like participating with something like uh, Gitcoin grants, maybe a Gitcoin grant grant round where teams would be able to basically, if you're familiar with Gitcoin, Gitcoin grants, there's like matching pools and then people donate to different projects and those donations are matched. So that's one possibility for helping uh, foster the community side of growing demand for BCTs as well. I mean, it's certainly the case that like having access to carbon markets has been somewhat of a walled garden up until this point. I think like in order to get access, you need to have access to the registry, which costs at least a thousand dollars, like often thousands of dollars. You need to work through a broker's access. It's like it's a permission walled garden, even if you can get access, right? So like the carbon markets going up, you know, 30% last year or whatever it was. Um, and you know, I don't even know how much it's gone up this year. Like, um, I think it's like it's really important to like allow access to these to these assets to everybody. And it's quite clear, like um, you know, people like Mark Cuban talking, you know, is making statements that like all companies should hold Klima on their balance sheets. That like, um, you know, and this is Klima, right? Like, I mean, Klima itself gives exposure to. Uh, to carbon markets, but in a way that, like, really, upside is just so much bigger because of the incentives we have going on in this beautiful system that's created. Like, but I mean, all of this is talking about Klima, which is, uh, in and of itself is exciting, right? And like, the same sort of applies to BCT in different ways, right? Like, I mean, BCT is kind of like, you know, as mentioned about, you know, in, in a, like, offsetting NFTs, like, there's people talking about uh, using uh, BCT inside of computer games. Like, there's quite a lot of people looking at this. I mean, that you could have trees growing inside a computer game that actually sequester real carbon because they are plugged in to, you know, these primitives, right? Like, to these systems. Yeah, um, it's pretty cool. This, the, like, I think the most exciting part of it is, like, really about, like, I mean, just look at what we've done with Prima, right? Like, that... Carbon as a collateral asset did not really exist before, right? Like, you know, imagine like borrowing against your carbon, right? Like that you know that this asset is going up, right? Whether it's clean or BCT or otherwise or what, right? Like, I mean, you know the carbon's going up, you know you care about the planet, you know you want to make this more valuable, and there's all of these mechanisms and ways that it is made more valuable, and that you can lock these things in and you can like take loans against it. You can really like, um, yeah, I think like I can't get too specific because there's a lot of things that are in the pipeline that are not sort of like finalized the details of them yet. So um, I would just leave it to be vague like that. Right, so. Gotcha. That makes sense. Can I just ask one more kind of on the on the more technical side, or you know, in the grand scheme of things, not that technical, but um, you you mentioned um, other kind of efforts to tokenize carbon credits like uh, Moss and, and other projects. Um, can, can you just re-articulate how, how those would come into the fold into a Klima project? It, would it be like the, the governance votes to approve other tokens that can also um, be used to, to mint Klima? Um, or would Moss have to go through the process of um, creating some sort of bridge between their tokens and the BCT tokens. So I can take this one. Um, it does depend somewhat on which project we're talking about, but if we assume that the token is an ERC-20 already, like it already applies with the Ethereum standard for fungible tokens, um, then that could be uh, either included in the existing BCT pool by 2K um, or could be um accepted directly into the treasury um definitely if we were accepting it directly into the treasury we would have a governance vote um and i'm pretty sure we would want to have a governance vote with two um to agree because 
basically the BCT pool was created according to Klima's specifications by Toucan, right? Like they're our partner. So any changes that are made to the BCT pool parameters, um, they're going to go through Klima, even though it's Toucan who's, who would implement those changes. Um, I think I answered your question basically like MCO2, if it's an ERC20, which that one is, um, could be pulled into BCT pending approval by um, by us and by Toucan. And I think we would put that up to a vote. Um, it, it's very much a loose thing right now because we haven't crossed that bridge yet. Um, but my personal opinion is we should definitely vote on that. Yeah, I'd like to just augment that a little bit. I would say that, um, yeah, and like there could be three options, right? Like as Marcus outlined that we whitelisted and added to the BCT pool, or that it goes directly in, uh, it comes directly into our treasury as an asset. I think that um, I think that if if it happens, the the most likely way that will it will happen um, is that we will like create as we create a BCT uh, on Toucan, we can create any number of index pools, right? And like. Um, we need to always remember, right, like the problem with carbon credits is about liquidity, right? It's like, it's not a problem, but it's something that we always need to be aware of, essentially. So like, you know, even Moss, like, um, they don't have the liquidity needed to necessarily not fragment the market, right? If, if Moss exists on chain and BCT exists on chain and there's other pools coming on Toucan, for example, like we're talking about fragmentation of liquidity. And so what we really want is deep liquidity that is interoperable, right? So I would say that the most likely way that this will happen, uh, if it happens, is that uh, a new pool will be created on Toucan that is not BCT, and that, um, that the vote would be to include that in the Kingdom Treasury. Now, right. this is all my opinion, of course. It's just like understanding the depth of all the systems. Like I think like in terms of like, the best way to do it, like that would be my vote, essentially. But of course, we're a DAO, and uh, yeah, let's see. Great, that makes sense. Thanks for the answering the question, guys. I appreciate it. Thank you, it's a good question. Sensei Silvio, trying to bring you on. Greetings. Hello. I guess you have a question. Yeah, a lot of, uh, some of my question is around um, how we might be able to bring uh, other some of the larger productions of carbon credit and producers of carbon credits on chain and how we can play a role for that, as well as how we could uh, build a bridge between our impact market and our investment bank into um, creating people, giving people the option to uh, stake or buy some of the carbon credits. So I'm really interested in exploring that partnership. I'm here in Miami, in Florida, where I'm an ambassador to the city doing Tisha City partnerships and, of course, focus on impact investments the last decade. And uh, just really eager to see how we might be able to connect some of our real world DeFi instruments and bonds and loans into um, how we prove the carbon credit and carbon emissions and, and ultimately to connect it into your, your project. So if you're interested in collaborating a bit more on that. Yeah, please do reach out. I'm like super interested in all of that, like even impact investments, like so we started with carbon because it's an existing market and it's a kind of like unit of account, like or it's an, an atomic measurable number somehow, right? I mean, the reality is that like the best way to make sure carbon doesn't go in the air is to make sure everybody around the forest is super happy and that they have cool with good lives with good health care and all this kind of jazz so they don't have to cut down trees to, you know, go get operations in hospitals, right? So it's certainly like what we need is definitely more nuanced than um you know just working with like singular assets like carbon as such right 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 and, and i'll give you an example right i mean we're we're, we're we want to you know partner because we are actually managing the 
we're the we're we're looking to manage the assets, the asset management for, for example, we have an opportunity to buy over a hundred hectares of land um, in the Amazon, and we wanna we're already we're working with the indigenous communities all around the world. We would like to buy this land and make sure that as a private title holder, we give the rights to the indigenous community so they don't get kicked out like they usually do. And they preserve this land so we can obviously track it and pay it back through, through the carbon credits, right? Once we buy this, this stuff back or uh, see how we might be able to act like an asset manager for, for actually making use of this pool of capital and, and connecting it into a real world, real world impact that people can follow and trace along with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we want to help you do that. So please get in touch and let's talk about this. There's a lot to talk about. I mean, probably too much here. But I mean, suffice to say, like, ultimately what we need is a way to create, create value that can be traded or like, you know, I mean, carbon credits are essentially like an asset that represents carbon taken mm -hmm. out of the air. But how does it create assets that are actually more than that, right? Um, and yeah, I mean, it's a super deep, it's a super deep rabbit hole there. Um, I think I can definitely connect you with people that can help you. And Klimadao in general is very interested uh, going forward and funding this kind of thing, although it's not like the first thing we're looking at, obviously. <laughs> but we're looking for people to get involved and to take ownership and help lead with this too. So I think there's certainly a lot of synergy there, and I think we can definitely help each other on this. So please do reach out. How, how could I do so? I've, I've made a few chats in the partnership channel and, and um, you know, just... Uh, you know, uh, what's the best way to sort of have more direct level of conversation? I've, I've tried reaching out in a couple of different ways, but it's it's not as as direct, and I and I have a hard time monitoring all the all the communication mm -hmm. effectively. Uh, you can send me a PM, and I'll I'll reply to you immediately. And we'll we'll okay. make a better we'll make a better plan. All right, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for your question. Greetings, Rios. Uh, good, good day. Hi, this is Kyle uh, Rios in Costa Rica. And uh, thank you for your work. Thank you for um, and congratulations on the progress you're making. Um, I'm working on a regenerative uh, economics operating system with a first use case uh, focused on building a regenerative DeFi terminal and dashboard and looking for partners, collaborators, advice, very early stages, um, but there's an immense, there's an incredible convergence happening with new dApps in the space and um, your breakthrough and comments by uh, Rune Christensen about um, the potential of this regenerative space. And so I just wanted to reach out and see if this is something that you could see um, uh, KlimaDAO being part of in terms of having a, a dedicated widget or uh, panel, if you will, be integrated into such, uh, an op uh, such an operating system and the terminal and dashboard connected with it. I, mean, I can not think of any reason why we would not like to work with you. Um, yeah, please reach out and like, let's, let's get you talking to the right people. I think ultimately we all need to work together in order to do what needs to be done. And network effects are super important. And yeah, okay. we're actually actively looking to partner with people. So please do send me a PM also, and we can connect off this call. I'll do that. Thank you very much. Look forward to the conversation. Thanks Thank again. You. That's fine. Hello, little dragon, sir. Hi, everyone. Thank you. Um, I have a question regarding marketing. From my understanding, it is uh, as as um, the more people join the community, the better for us. So my question was, what are we doing for uh, regarding marketing, and how can we get involved? Because. Um, from my understanding, we only have the web website, and yeah, I was wondering if there is if somebody's working on more content or uh, videos or something like that. Yeah, so I can uh, touch on this. So over in the contributor server, so we mentioned earlier the contributor server we're still getting 
everything's set up and like we're um, improving the onboarding process so that way we don't just let a flood of people in there and oh, then it's yeah. chaos. Um, so right now there are a few initiatives that we have going. Um, one that's I find particularly interesting is a, a guerrilla marketing tool basically where people would be able to um, enter their information and then be able to print out a bunch of uh, flyers and, mm -hmm. or stickers. We're kind of um, figuring that out. But there's that initiative. We're also, uh, um, I think we mentioned it a bit earlier, that we're trying to um, get, have boots on the ground and interact more at COP26, which is the UN climate summit happening right now. Um, some other marketing initiatives. Uh, as we touched on earlier, we're going to have a creative brief with the contributor server and core team uh, this week, so that'll help us get more aligned in terms of how we communicate marketing, how Klima expresses itself as a brand, and how we want to interact with the different uh, stakeholders in the protocol. So I think uh, part of it is a little bit of growing pains. You know, once you bring in thousands of new community members in the span of two weeks, you want to make sure you're still incorporating everybody's opinions and uh, and uh, making sure you're weighing the feedback properly. So. I think we. I think the tone so far has been we want to make sure we get it right instead of just uh, throwing a bunch of like shotgunning it, you know. So yeah. I think yeah. I, I hope I've answered your question. Yes, you did. Thank you very much. Thank you for asking. That's it from my side. No more question. Keep up the good. Oh, thank you. Sorry, I, I had right-clicked and uh, sent you back before. I didn't mean to cut you off. Thank you for that. And yeah, I mean, feel free, anyone who wants to be involved, to reach out and get connected. All right, well, I think uh, we're going to wrap up the office hours. Um, oh, you disconnected. <laughs> Yeah, I accidentally disconnected. I mean, I have a couple more minutes that I'm with you guys. Like, um, you can probably take one more question if you like. Yeah, that's fine. We can do one more. Look forward to the side for being invited. You may see a, a banner to click. Hi, guys. Uh... Hi. Yeah, it's good. Nice. Hello. So just a quick question. Um, it's more a light-hearted one, to be honest. Um, Go for will it. you guys create a a new um Discord role similar to Olympus? Um, in the Olympus we have the titanium nano graphite reinforced diamond hands. It's for people that um that were in the ideal that haven't sold their 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 allocation and they dox they dox their wallets so that you can always see their wallets and if they sell it. They, they, they get tagged with, with, a, with a tag of shame. Yeah, that sounds like a lot of fun. I'll definitely look at yeah, that. <laughs> All right, cool, guys. <laughs> nice one. Thank you. Put up Thank you. Hi, Al. Hey. Yes. Uh, yeah, thanks, uh, thanks for the time today. Uh, cheers from uh, San Diego. Um, my question's around BCT and trying to process uh, with something that was said earlier that 10 billion Terra verified credits have been retired um, and put on the BCT chain. Um, I, I think I heard that correctly, and it confused me because isn't the max um, supply 6.8 million BCT right now? So I didn't understand how that could have happened oh. that so many carbon credits uh, were put on BCT. Yeah, I'm oh. no, sorry. I, I, can, I can answer this one. I think it, it was I meant to say 10 million. Um, with an M, not a B. Oh, um, okay. And I, I think the question still stays, right? Because it's 6.8 million max supply. So, is, well, is right a now, verified credit not equivalent to one BCT. No, they they are. So what what yeah. happens is, um, in the process of bridging, um, Toucan has a process in which you know their retirement is recorded in Vera um, itself. If you go to registry.vera.org, um, you can you can see that, and then <clears throat> so there's over 10 million um, tons that have been retired uh, to bridge over. <clears throat> excuse me, uh, Toucan on uh, into into BCT right now, um, and then as part of the bridging process, the BCT just gets minted 
um, when those bridgers uh, make it through the toucan process. Um, so on our like on on my dashboard, um, that's kind of why I've I've got it here on the main one to where we can track the uh, actual BCT uh, supply. So like right now, the BCT supply in in Polygon is around nine point four million. Um, so that means there's still you know there's still some tons that are in process of coming over that bridge. So that's why there's going to be a little bit of a discrepancy there in the numbers. Um, but the total supply of BCT right now is uh, 9.4 million in uh, Polygon. We were down, like, the, the 6 million was, was kind of right after launch. Uh, 6.2 was, like, the, a couple of days after launch. And we've been uh, steadily adding to that supply on Polygon over the last couple of weeks. I see, I see. So, there, so there's not a max cap. Um, Correct. Or, or, right. Okay. As many tons of carbon as exist in the Earth that we can pull out of the atmosphere. I mean, for sure, for sure, there's like, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I, love it. Um, I mean, for sure, there's a certain, there's a fixed amount of very, very certified tons that are in existence, right? And um, I unfortunately cannot pull the number out of my head right now, um, but we have 2.5% of them in the treasury, right? So um, you can extrapolate that out. Um, it's some hundred millions, like I would say. I mean, I've been told a billion, but to me that doesn't add up. Um, but the reality is that uh, these numbers are probably changing every day. Uh, but suffice to say, like, um, yeah, you can trace back every single BCT to its origin and to the original Vera certified sun, and you can verify that yourself on the public, uh, as Kujo said, uh, registry.vera.org. So don't worry, there's no, there's no magic signs coming from anywhere. That's great. Awesome to hear. Cheers, guys. Thanks for uh, answering my question. Sweet. Thanks for your question. And thanks to all of you and the team uh, for being here and, uh, you know, sharing, caring, asking questions and uh, clarifying all this lovely stuff. Uh, we're super excited. Things are going super great. This is just the beginning. So, yeah, guys, anything you want to add before we depart? Yes, that's it then. All right, then. Thank you, everybody. See you in the Discord. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, thanks Bye. Thanks.